the coronavirus pandemic. It's the only thing in the news, and it's the reason you know what all your coworkers' bedrooms look like without creating a problem for HR. Right now, things are not looking good all over the world, and especially not in the United States. In fact, Robert Redfield, the director of the CDC and man whose face got put on upside down by God, said yesterday that the next few months could be the most difficult in the public health history of this nation even worse than the six-month stretch when you couldn't go anywhere without hearing baby shark. We thought that was the pandemic. The good news is, though, that a vaccine is around the corner. But you still need to get enough people to get the vaccine so that people are immune. And let's face it, in a country where millions of people refuse to even wear a mask, there's a good chance that many of them will resist getting an injection, which is sort of like a mask that hurts. So that's why some high-profile people from across the political spectrum are forming a supergroup to promote the vaccine. In a show of presidential leadership in this health crisis, three former presidents are ready to roll up their sleeves to bolster public confidence in the new coronavirus vaccines. Barack Obama, George W. Bush, and Bill Clinton all volunteering to get their shots on camera once the FDA authorizes a vaccine. Clinton and Obama got on board after President Bush apparently reached out to Dr. Anthony Fauci and Dr. Deborah Birx to see how he could help promote the vaccine. Now that is some presidential leadership offering to get the vaccine on live TV before everybody else to boost public confidence. Also, it's a great way to sneak ahead to the front of the line. I see you, Barry. Yeah, I see you. You and Bill and George snatching those first shots. (laughs) Ha ha! No hate, fellas. Game recognized game. And you know the game's not gonna stop there. Because I bet there's gonna be one smart Secret Service agent who's gonna be like, did somebody say shot? I'll protect you! He's gonna jump in front of the needle and be like, ah, I got vaccinated for you. Now, you might be wondering, why hasn't President Trump also offered to take the vaccine with these other presidents? Well, by the time the vaccines are available, he'll also be a former president, but don't forget, he beat corona already. So, he's immune. Also, He can't go before the other presidents because he'll take all the lollipops. I'm actually glad that Trump isn't part of this event because you know that he would find a way to make things awkward. I'm not getting the vaccine in front of the camera. I don't want anybody seeing my butt. Uh, sir, they do the shot in your arm. Too late. I already dropped my pants. Not to mention, watching them get the vaccine on TV doesn't really help. What we really need to do is watch them 24-7 for a few weeks after the vaccine so that we can see that it's safe, you know? So they all need to live together in a house where we can see them eat and sleep and hang out and, ooh, maybe they could do challenges and vote each other off. We don't even need a vaccine. Let's just make this show. Of course, until there is a vaccine, it'll be more important than ever to continue following social distancing guidelines. Now, the good news is that a lot of politicians have been speaking out very clearly about the need for us in the public to stay safe. The bad news is that these politicians haven't all been practicing what they preach. A number of Democratic leaders apologizing or reversing course after multiple occurrences of do as I say, not as I do. They have been caught not following their own coronavirus guidelines. In San Francisco, Mayor London Breed facing backlash after it was revealed that she attended a birthday party last month at the French Laundry, the famed and exclusive Napa Valley restaurant with seven other people at her table. And when this party happened, such gatherings were discouraged by statewide guidelines. The day before Breed's dinner at the French Laundry, Governor Governor Gavin Newsom also attended a party there with at least a dozen other people from different households. Denver Mayor Michael Hancock told residents of his city to skip large Thanksgiving dinners. And then he promptly appeared at the Denver airport and flew to Mississippi to spend the holiday with his wife and daughter. Before Thanksgiving, the mayor of Austin, Texas, had this message for his city. We need to, you know, stay home if you can. Do everything you can to try to to keep the numbers down. This is not the time to, to relax. But it turns out when he gave that warning, Mayor Steve Adler wasn't home. He was on vacation in the swanky Mexican resort of Cabo San Lucas. No, man, come on. What is it with these Democrats? Hey, everybody, this is your mayor here telling you to stay home and stay safe. Do the right thing. All my boys in the pool know what I'm talking about. Say what's up, everybody. Yeah, (laughs) we live in that Cabo life, bitches. Like, I'm sorry, man. Everyone has given up their lives, and then you've got these politicians who are just hypocrites out here. What, 
You guys think Corona respects your office too much to come after you? Because don't forget, it got the president of the United States. It's not gonna be starstruck by Governor Hair Gel. And yeah, I know that Republicans are also having big indoor parties. I know that. Some people are like, oh, Trevor, what about the Republicans? Yeah, everyone expects them to be doing this. The official Republican Party platform right now is just... <laughs> in fact, in a way, these Democrats are even worse than the anti-maskers because of their hypocrisy. At least when those dudes break the rules, they're open about it. Anti-mask people are just walking around in bars, breathing into each other's faces. Hey, do you have any COVID in you? Would you like some? <sighs>